Welcome to this web lecture on capacities in the vehicle routing problem. So in two previous web lectures, we've been using the example of Cool TUE, a company that delivers ice cream to home addresses, uh, to look into the two index and the three index formulation of the vehicle routing problem. And now we're going to use the same example to look into how capacities change this story. So as I said, Cool TUE allows you to pre-order ice cream and then they deliver it to your door. And they're using a car fleet of cargo bikes to do so. Compared to trucks, these cargo bikes have a considerably smaller capacity and you just cannot visit all customers in all of Eindhoven with just one cargo bike and one tour. So there's two different ways to formulate that. There's many more, but there's two very simple ones to formulate that. One is we can say that a bike must not visit more than N customers, or we can say that the load on a bike must not exceed Q. So if we cannot visit more than N customers, this is the case that I think you can look into yourself. That is something that is a very simple extension. And we're now going to look into a formulation that allows us to say that we don't have more than a load of Q on each cargo bike. So what we're doing for that is we're just actually reading this formulation. So this is an extension of the vehicle routing formulation with two indices. So we're still going to have a set of locations and we're still going to have the parameters for transport cost and for the number of vehicles. But additionally, we also have demand of a customer as a parameter and a capacity. So demand of a customer in this case can, for example, be the number of ice cream cr crates that this customer ordered. Our decision variables stay exactly the same. So we are just tracking if a truck or if a cargo bike travels from I to J. Nothing else changes. Now let's look into the constraints. On the flow conservation and visit constraint, nothing changes, but we do see some changes here in this capacity constraint, which also eliminates subtours in this case. So we replace the subtour with a capacity constraint. And now we're actually going to look into how this constraint works. So what we're saying here is that the number of arcs that leave a set subset S has to be at least the, the demand in this subset divided by the capacity. So and now let's just look into different examples for this. So in this example, all nodes have a unit demand. So this one has a demand of one, has a demand of one, and has a demand of one. And each bike has a capacity of three. We immediately, of course, see that this bike over here exceeds this capacity limit. So if we do this, and we have this constraint down here, and we have this set, then we can count the demand in this subset, which is one, two, three. We divide this by the capacity, which is also three. So we say at least one arc has to leave the subset. That's the blue one, that is fine, and we're good. Gets slightly more problematic if we look at this one here, but it's also, we also still see that for this subset, nothing is violated. So here we have a demand of four within this blue subset, one, two, three, and four over there. We divide this by three, so we have four over three, then due to these brackets that we're having, we're rounding up to the next full integer, so we have two. And this also works because here we have these two arcs that actually leave this subset, so we're good. It gets problematic once we start considering this subset, because in this subset, we have a demand of four, which we divide by a capacity of three. So what this tells us that we have to have at least rounding up to the next integer, four over three gives us rounding up two, two arcs that leave this subset. So the only way that this works is by introducing one additional vehicle. What I would like you to take away from this web lecture on the capacitated vehicle routing problem is first of all, of course, what capacities do with the model formulation. Then what I would also like you to remember is explaining math models. So what we just did, it was no longer modeling, but we just looked at the formulation and we tried to understand what happened there. And what I would like you to model is the maximum number of customers. Thanks. <laughs>